Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at Morphe's with a pretty darn cool piece. This is a registered CNR fully transferable German MG3. That's the 762 NATO version of the iconic World War II MG42, which was used by the German military, well, after World War II. So the thing is, of course, with the end of World War II, the Wehrmacht, the German army, is disarmed and disbanded by the Allies. But, of course, we're going to slowly descend into the Cold War. West Germany is on the front lines of the Cold War. The French, British, and Americans realize that they don't really want to be perpetually responsible for German military security. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have Germany as an ally. If the, the expectation was if the Cold War turns hot, it's going to involve a giant Russian armored column punching through into West Germany. So maybe we should, uh, you know, let the Germans reconstitute a military. And so they do. The question comes up of what equipment is this military going to use? Obviously, they're not going to use Car 98Ks anymore. They develop rifles. Well, they adopt the FAL as the G1. They adopt the, the G3 as the G3. And when it comes to machine guns, the initial solution was very simple. It was, well, oh, there are still lots of MG42s around. That was a great gun. We'll just use that. Uh, once 762 NATO is adopted, that needs to be converted to 76 NATO. This becomes the MG1, which is essentially just an MG42 converted to the new 308 cartridge. But that's not going to work forever because you can't just refurbish and reuse old guns forever. There's going to need to be new production to get guns that are, you know, have a long service life still ahead of them. And so that is where we get the MG3. There are also a whole bunch of product improvements and minor changes. Some minor, some, well, they're all kind of minor changes. But put together, they make for a substantially better gun than the MG42. So I figured this would be a really good opportunity to take an MG3 and compare it to a World War II MG42 and show you guys all the various changes that were made. Let's start with a quick look at the markings. These are on the back left of the receiver as on the MG42. We've got our uh, official designation, serial number, a Rheinmetall logo here, and the date of production. This is particularly relevant because it is July of 1968, which means it predates uh, the US uh, machine gun amnesty that came later in 1968. And this is in fact a fully transferable gun, which is super cool and extremely rare. Let's start with the changes involved in the change in caliber. The original 42, of course, was an 8mm Mauser. This is a 8x57. The MG3 is in 7.62 NATO, which is 7.62x51, a substantially shorter cartridge. They've also added all this stuff to the bottom of the feed tray. This latch right here is for attaching a plastic assault drum. Uh, basically, it's just a kind of like an RPD drum. It's a, a carrier that holds a 50-round belt rolled up. It's not actually a magazine, it's just a, a belt carrier. The original MG42s used the same sort of thing. On the MG42, it simply slipped down onto these little rails. On the MG3, it clips in like this. And of course, the drums are not interchangeable because they want the MG42 ones are substantially longer than the MG3. Now, if we open these up, you can see a number of other changes. This is our MG42. It's longer. You can see the difference in the spacer here. This is a uh, space for the belt to feed out when it's empty. You can see this has been changed a little bit. There's a tab to help control the belt better. And of course, this is shorter because the whole thing is shorter. More importantly, the 42 or the MG3 has added this extra set of holding pawls, uh, which prevent the belt from sliding out, uh, out the side of, out the feed side of the gun. This is part of a series of improvements that allow the MG3 to pull a belt substantially heavier than the MG42. The MG3 can lift like six feet of hanging belt against gravity and successfully feed. It's uh, much stronger at doing that than the MG42 was. And of course, these both lift up in the same way. Also here, looking at the feed covers, the 42, this moves just loosely on the MG3. This is now spring loaded. You can see the spring right here. So this will always sit in the same position. And the roller on the rear of the bolt, which controls the feed mechanism, is now spring-loaded. So it will compress down, 
which means you can close the feed tray whether the bolt is forward or back. On the MG42 here, you had to ensure that this channel was in the right position to drop over that feed roller. So um, if it was in the wrong position, you could actually damage the feed tray by trying to force it closed. And the MG3 solves that issue. Along with those improvements to the feed system, the MG3 was designed to be able to use three different loading systems. It could use the German DM1 50 round continuous belts, the German DM6 disintegrating links, or the US M13 links, which gave it a really good element of universal applicability. This was something that made it easier to sell to other countries, uh, kind of take whatever NATO standard links you're already using and, well, they'll work in an MG3. We also have some differences in the sights. The basic idea is pretty much the same. You have a folding rear sight on each. There we go. The MG3 is uh, graduated out to 1,200 meters. The 42 was graduated out to 2,000. Um, I guess they decided just to get a little more realistic with the effective range here on the MG3. The MG3 also, very distinctively, has a built-in aircraft, anti-aircraft, rear sight. So that lifts up for use with the standard front sight. On the MG42, you did actually have anti-aircraft sights. This was your rear sight, which flips up, but then the anti-aircraft front sight was a spider type that was carried separately and plugged into this socket. So with the MG3, you actually have anti-aircraft sights fixed to the gun and always available should they be needed with a little cover plate there to protect them. And our last external difference before we start taking the guns apart is in the booster. And this is basically just uh, machining design. There's no fundamental change in how these are working, but this is the MG3 booster. This is the older MG42 booster. Disassembly is identical for the MG3 and the MG42. We're gonna start by pressing that button, rotate the stock, stock comes off. You can actually remove the buffer here without removing the stock first, or you can take them both off. So there's the rear buffer of the gun and the nice braided recoil spring. Then we can just open the charging handle and pull the bolt assembly out the back of the gun. And here we have a bunch of other changes, some of them kind of subtle, but also pretty important. So of course, you can see the spring-loaded roller right there. This is our MG3 bolt, this is the 42. The MG3 bolt is a bit heavier. You can see there's more material back here. Um, there were actually two different bolts and two different buffers developed for the MG3. There was a heavy bolt and a heavy buffer. Um, and then the standard ones, which are still a bit heavier than the original MG42s. By tweaking uh, the exact components for the, the bolt, the buffer, and the booster, you can kind of get your pick of rate of fire on the MG3, anything from 700 RPM up to about 1300 RPM. The Bundeswehr decided to go with a fast rate of fire. Some of the other countries that bought the MG3 would opt for the heavy bolt and the slower rate of fire to conserve ammunition. At any rate, we also have this added feature on the top of the bolt body. This is to help direct link ejection. This is one of those things where when you get, you know, tens of thousands of MG42s in service, you start finding the, like the, the low probability issues that occasionally come up and then you can fix them one at a time. And one is occasionally links getting stuck between the bolt and the receiver rails. And this added little rib prevents that from happening. Now we can go ahead and disassemble this pretty easily. Spring, this is going to, this guy is going to hit our ejector pin right there. When the bolt comes all the way back, we've got our firing pin and its body and the ejector itself. Uh, the MG42 is a recoil operated roller locked gun. So these rollers are going to stay locked into the trunnion uh, until recoil operation pushes the whole bolt backwards, which pushes the rollers back into the bolt head, unlocks the thing. So this is not a delayed blowback gun. It is actually a recoil-operated, positively locked design. 
one of the issues with the original MG42 is you could actually reassemble the bolt head onto the bolt body upside down, and that causes problems. On the MG3, they fixed that. You can see there's this little extra flange of material right here that makes it impossible to put the bolt head on backwards. So again, not something that ought to be strictly necessary, uh, but if you're going to make improvements, that's a good improvement to make. And we can also see that the MG3 has a slightly larger ejection port here on the bottom of the receiver compared to the MG42. So another just slight increase in reliability. Beyond those sorts of changes, though, it is really remarkable just how identical these guns are. This truly is the same design, just uh, improved in a few minor ways and changed in caliber. Perhaps not surprisingly, the MG3 turned out to be a very successful project for Rheinmetall and a very successful gun for the Bundeswehr, uh, as well as for the like four dozen other countries that would purchase and use and adopt these things. The Bundeswehr used this as their standard uh, machine gun, general purpose machine gun, until it was finally replaced in 2012 by the new HK MG5s. However, we will be seeing MG3s in military service around the world for many decades still to come. It is particularly cool that there is actually, there are actually three total transferable examples of these on the US NFA registry, and they are just barely able to squeak in. This was adopted in 1968, uh, which is the same year as the US amnesty under, uh, well, in the end of the ability to import and register foreign made machine guns. So this is one that just barely squeaked in. It's in gorgeous condition. It was, uh, It'll be a real treat for someone who's interested in a German machine gun collection. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.